Oh, welcome again to Monday Night Raw. Oh, wait, look at this. See that? It actually says hello. See, that's, that's in English. Um, to those, I guess, in Asian countries, I have no idea what this is, but... Hello! I would guess that's what it is. Um, for those people in Mexico, or Spain, España. Hola! And if anyone's watching me in the Middle East, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever that says. I'm the one, the only hobo Tom. And right now I'm going through spa week, so that's there are reasons why this video and tomorrow's video are going to be up at either uh, work here them at ridiculous hours in the morning and will be posted probably the next day sometime. Or at an equally ri ridiculous hour of the morning. <laughs> so the, the one thing I want to say, shout out for Hogan for life. Because remember, this was a special show. This was kind of what it felt like to be a ratings grab. Ratings grab and ticket grab. Because they had a whole bunch. I do apologize if my lips look funny. I was eating pizza. And I made some sandwiches today. And I bit my lip for some reason. That pizza was really good, though. It was, a, it was a Pizza Hut. Well, that was the weekend. It was a Pizza Hut pizza. Pan crust, extra cheese, and... Ooh, that's right. Black cherry root beer hard soda. Ooh, that was good. In fact, that reminds me. I have to get my penny shot. Oh! I need my penny shot of whiskey. And I have to get my two bottles of, of booze next week or this week. I have to figure out stuff. I think I goofed my cell phone up. Because the one potential girlfriend blocked me. And I'm like, I think the only thing I asked was like, and I said, hello, how was your weekend? How was your week starting? I've probably said much worse. But let's not talk about my technical issues. My cat was lying in the hallway. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. In fact, let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And read the notes. Oh, I'm um, Slicks. I am still working on a new thank you gif. So this old thank you gif. I think. Which one should I give you? I'll just give you my Mundo Madness one. I want to write that down. Mundo Madness for Slicks. Next time, I think tomorrow or Wednesday, it, it does I have to go through my video camera. <laughs> Update a couple things. Post a couple more videos. Because I did put up my video for the live event I went to on Sunday. There's a couple excerpts I want to take out of there. Mainly EC3's shoot interview. And... Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Um oh I have to I have to put the I have to make my take it off Nikki. <laughs> that was Yeah. But thanks. So right now you guys gonna get Mundo Madness.
In fact, I have two thank you gifts featuring one Nikki Cross. Pretty cool. So, so with all everything said and done, let's talk about some pro wrestling. John Cena opens up the show. Da, 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 da. This is the one I decided to make a sandwich. Um, I don't know. He talks. The Usos show up. People want the rock. Yeah, like, we know who you want. And I think like you could hear like a, a faint murmur of Rocky, Rocky the Rock. Oh, it's sad. And they said, "No, give us a doctor of thugonomics." And he did. He did make John Cena give him credit. He made the Usos break kayfabe, especially when he's talked about. When you reference Jimmy's arrest in Hillsborough County, <laughs> the Usos are laughing. Rikishi shows up. Renee, tranquilo. It's not that exciting. Um, the revival spoil the two cool moments, and then Devon Dudley comes out. And then in the back, you have Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, and Hulk Hogan. And no one was Molina. It wasn't Trish Stratus. I don't think it was Stacey Keebler. I forget my divas. I think that's when I gave up watching wrestling for a while. Mainly because every match that involved a woman was a brawn panties match. A couple times? Like, if you did it once a month, that's okay. When you do it every show, that's kind of what you expect, and when you don't get it, you're disappointed. So. Oh, and then the fiend show. There was a fiend showing. I don't know if it was just a fiend, a tease of the fiend, or if Kevin Dunn. Dun, 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 dun. Botched up something. But then Booker T was there, he announced. And this starts us off for our first match. So they had a four announced, four, four person announced team. Um, it was the Usos versus the Revival. This was really good. It, 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 was, it was a good. The, the Usos do that delayed backdrop where they kind of hold the guy on their shoulder an extra second, it seems. Seems so impactful. And, oh, the Revival do that slingshot rope thing. I mean, the, the double team work by the Revival is so amazing. And it's just so cool. It really harkens back. I know Jim Cornette on his show. So the revival only tag team that actually do tag team wrestling, and sometimes I think he's right. You know, it's just the, the classic tag team corner work. You tag your part or your um, throw your opponent's head into your opponent's foot or knee. It's the same principle. It's awesome. And for this, they they didn't do anything stupid. They just did the classic picture in picture, which just Seem fine. In fact, I'm even going to mention this ad. It was Alexa Bliss in a Burger King commercial. And she's the queen. And the only reason I realized at the end, I'm like, I was staring at the queen. I'm like, why does she have pink tips on her hair? It's like, is that Alexa Bliss? Or is that someone else? And then um, once the court jester who was who's Rod Simmons. He just says, damn. Oh, that's Alexa Bliss. Yep, so they have the... Their <laughs> WWE has rented out some of its pro wrestlers for either good or for bad. Make commercial. I think this all started, I think, with the Rusev commercials. For dollar three. Or Dollar General? I think it was Dollar Tree. 
I honestly forgot that. That was funny, though. Um, so, again, it was a good picture in picture. It was fine. Uh, Jimmy Uso, he gets the hot tag, the revival. Again, they're just so good. They do that European uppercut into a, a, a belly to back. The Usos do go over. Hard to complain about this match. This was a fun match. This is a surf and turf quality match. Uh, then they do a couple funny things. Alicia Fox is there. I'm like, Alicia Fox. I just like seeing that. And then I think it's Beth Phoenix. Which makes sense because she's married to Christian and Christian showed up. So that made sense at least. And Santino with the Cobra. And he was being way too creepy sexual with that Cobra sock. Sock puppet. You put on his hand for the Cobra Strike. I don't know. Again, that was when I gave up on wrestling for a little bit because I think mainly because Stone Cold left. The Rock was on his way out. Edge and Christian were there. I think the hard, I think I think that's the time when like half the WWE went over to TNA, but TNA was really no good. So again, it's just that it's all these weird time frames like that. So it's always hard to say. But that's when I kind of gave up on wrestling for a little bit. I think that's also. I think that's also when I didn't have TV. But yeah, that makes sense. If you don't have TV and you can't watch it, that's the end of that. So now that I've, and I think I was still getting my internet connection via phone too, back in the day. Um, Alicia Fox was there, Beth Phoenix, and Santino. <laughs> Drew McIntyre shows up. Says legends. He just had this disgusted look. It's like, dude, I wanted Drew to beat up Santino. That would have been funny. Then they have a segment with R Truth at Comic Con. Uh, Hurricane Helms was there. He tried to roll him up. <laughs> Name Michelle. She's she's good. <laughs> I think she almost won the twenty first seven champion. Um, she's working there. Oh, that was funny, though. You know what? Whatever. Oh, yeah, working with Drake to get the 24-7 championship. That's, 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 what, that's what my pathetic notes say. Then you have the Godfather in the back. <laughs> Folks, it's time to get aboard the oh train. I'm surprised Charlie didn't freak out when he said that. Charlie, I think does. I, I'm actually surprised the audience kind of responded. It's like it's time for everyone to get aboard the. And you heard the in the background ho oh, train. And then we had Drew McIntyre versus Seth. Or what we were supposed to have was Drew McIntyre next versus Cedric Alexander. Fight started outside the ring. Drew McIntyre just got sick of all of Cedric's. Uh, Drew McIntyre was first in the ring. Uh, Cedric Alexander on his way down to the ring came down. Fight just starts outside. That was a great spot, though. He had gave him the Alabama slam. On to the second hardest part of the ring, which is the apron, because the first hardest part is the ring post. I wonder if it's, I wonder if the apron's the third hardest part. Because then I know there's also the metal turnbuckle connectors. Never thought of that. Yeah, because actually the ring apron would probably be fourth or fifth hardest part of the ring. 
So you can go underneath the ring. I don't know. Yeah, that spot was great. Knocks out the sexy guys. Now there's no match. I'm like, what? Well, where's the match? It was a great beatdown. I'll give it a skin of soup rating. Mainly because I wanted to see a proper match. Um, Drake Maverick then somehow, I think overall this, uh, uh, gets his title back. I think he won it in comic. Um, then he confronts the Boogeyman. And then Pat Patterson comes out, wins the belt. Hey, it's just a legend. I think the belt changed... Eight or nine times. Yeah, I think closer to nine. Now, uh, Christian, then, my fellow Canadian, boo Christian, boo Renee, boo Canada. I would cheer for, no wonder I don't talk to them. Lillian Garcia returned. Yay. Uh, she called the next match was Viking Raiders versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. This was actually pretty good. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder did the smart thing. They attacked the Viking Raiders first. So they, didn't, they just didn't wait around, which is good. Um, eventually, that didn't last long, though. I mean, they did do that really cool move where it was like um, a face buster, side rush, and leg, leg sweep. Anytime I see a tag team combo move, I always I'm always kind of che cheered up. Um, poor I think it's used as a weapon twice during this match. I think once he gets body slammed on Zack Ryder, and the other time he gets like flung into Kurt Hawkins, and eventually they they they, they do do that pop up power slam. Just so pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of obvious. This, this, I mean, the Viking Raiders aren't losing anytime soon, especially to Hawkins and Ryder. And so well, that was actually a, a decent match. It was a ham sandwich. Once he gets starting into the realm of predict of predictable stuff, yeah, it kind of takes away from it. Then in the back, there was a segment um, between Mike and Maria Canales. I guess Maria wanted Mike to rub her belly with lotion to prevent stretch marks. I, whatever. Because she's the one whose modeling career is going to pay for it because Mike doesn't know how to wrestle. In the background, there is Eve Menendez. And there's some other... Woman who has like blonde haired, big boobs, and like a whole bunch of tattoos. I don't think it was Terry Reynolds. I forget if she or not. I don't know, but she was blonde haired, big boobs, like arm tattoos, like whole sleeves. I'm like, who are you? I, again, I did not follow that whole Divas thing. I think Maurice was there, too, in the background. Again, Maurice is there. That's pretty cool. Um, she's just standing in the background and not doing anything. Whatever. Uh, then Eric Bischoff's there and, say, and says, Hey, Mike, if you don't like being on Raw, come over to Smack." Oh, that was a tease and a half. Uh, AJ Styles again said, yes, we're the original club, and that's a little bit of a promo for his match versus Seth Rollins later in the night. Uh, then Briscoe, not, not of the Briscoe, Pat Patterson and Jay, and Jay Briscoe took out Pat Patterson. So this is the... I think third, third title change, the 24-7. And right up with that, Kelly Kelly shows up. 
pins Jay Briscoe for the fourth title change, the 24-7 championship. It was okay. I didn't realize Kelly Kelly was so hot looking, though. That was enlightening, I guess. So then we have Samoa Joe. Uh, it's kind of a, with a Paul Heyman ish. My name is Samoa Joe. <laughs> honestly, because it was a legend show, I honestly wanted to see Scott's, and I, and I, I knew this wasn't going to happen, but I wanted to see Scott Steiner come out and say, You listen to me, you have a fat ass. And. That, if, if, if he managed to get Scott Steiner, that would have been the best. Uh, but that's definitely got a lot in for one hour. Um, then we had some Samoa on Samoa violence, because again, Samoa Joe talked about Roman Reigns, how he couldn't get it done. That brought out, uh, brought out Roman Reigns, so you have Samoa on Samoa violence, you know what happens. Yes, two Samoans fight. Um, but generally, in the old days, they would fight to the death with weapons made out of wood and shark teeth. Which is probably not what the WWE wants. Although, honestly, if they did have a little blood in this match, it probably would have made it a little bit more interesting. A little bit more to get behind. Um, Roman Reigns. He, he messed up his left arm, though. I saw that shoulder hit the ring post. One of two things. Either Roman Reigns is, is, is an amazing seller, which he honestly might as well could be. Or it looked to me like he dislocated that. And I know from dislocating my shoulders, after you dislocate it once, it's always easier to dislocate it a second time because the ligaments always stay stretched. If that makes sense. Like once you stretch out a ligament, yeah, it reverts back to its almost not, almost shape. Say if, and I don't know the exact medicine behind it, but I want to say if, like, say the ligament was, like, an inch long, it might be, like, like, after you re-pull it, or after you pull it once, it becomes, like, an inch and, like, a like, like, an inch and one 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 thirty. It's like one twenty. One twenty. Twenty. So it'd be one. Yeah. One. Yeah. One. It'd be like one. Like, if like say the ligament's one inch, it becomes then one and one twenty eighth of an inch longer, which is easier for it to reseparate. The good news is it's also easier to put just to put back too. Uh, it's. Depending on the severity, the one I had, like I popped out, and it eventually, I eventually, it wasn't a complete dislocation, but it was just enough where it it, it popped out, and then just by normal movement pop back in. Sometimes they make you tense a heavy weight and go slack to pop it in. Sometimes they literally have to like like one person will hold the arm and then like the other person will like literally have to force it into place. Now I'm gonna bed soon cheese but He's getting fussy because I'm not in bed yet. It was actually well past my bedtime. It all depends on the severity of it. It looked like it bothered him the whole match only because of the way the arm hung, which 
to me, it makes sense because I saw it, and, and I know when I dislocated my shoulders, it had a position where it just wanted to stay in after I popped it back in. And the weird thing with dislocating a shoulder, when it comes out, it hurts. When it stays out, it hurts. But once you get it back into its true proper position, and like I know when I dislocated my one in football, I felt it pop out. And then I think just by normal motion, it got in the general area. So it, it hurt initially. Then it was a dull pain. And then when I got to the trainers, I feel like gave it a good yank. I heard it pop. And then it's like, oh, wow, this, this is fine. I think, I think the muscles and everything get a little t tight. And the muscles don't like being stuck in positions for too long. What the heck's that? Oh, wow. I'm getting muscle. <laughs> I can feel things I haven't felt in a while up there, which is good. And it all also depends on the severity of it. Like, mine was for, I think, the next day I went to the doctor's. And he's like, yeah, the, yeah, the ligament looks stretched. And unfortunately, once it's stretched, it's always going to be stretched. Then I separated it a second time. I want to say in wrestling, because it was football, wrestling, wrestling. And I think this one, the initial dislocation hurt. But then once I, once, I think I just leaned on it funny. And I felt it pop back in, and it went right back into place. And it didn't hurt anymore, which is weird, because you're like, I, what the, why don't you work? But when you dislocate, like, when I dislocated this one, I think it was the football one was the second time, it just kind of, like, wanted to hang funny. I know it doesn't make that's That's what it looked like with Roman Reigns, though. And I won't get into any more medical technology, because... So I was probably saying, oh, well, that's not exactly what happens. Yeah, whatever. Talk to my sister. It's like, oh, well, she should have done this and this and this. It's like, well, guess what? She didn't. I'm like, well, why not? Because right? people don't listen to doctors sometimes. Some people don't go to doctors. Although someone's going to... Poor fuzz muffin. It's things stuck up her butt. Needles poked in her. And some stranger shining a light into her ears. I always feel bad for her. I always give her a mouse full of treats. Make her feel better. Just kind of leave her alone. Until... So some days when I'm... Oh, well. Um... Oh, again, it was good. It was really a brawling match. I mean, Joe just looked like he was trying to get, in some instances, trying to kill Roman Reigns. And the Spears, pretty powerful maneuver, I guess. Roman Reigns goes over. It was a fun match. It made sense. The way Samoa Joe can, can carry a match is amazing. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then, uh, yes, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, this is going to be part of my title, I think. Hulk Hogan for 24-7 for champion. Because uh, Miss TV opens up uh, with Steph. Uh, Paul tries to cut. Again, everyone's trying to imitate Paul Heyman. My name is Paul Heyman, and I'm the advocate for the cutest. My name is Hobo Tom, you and I am the advocate for the cutest, fluffiest, 
adorable, cuddliest cat champion ever. And here she is. Chispa. What do you say to that entrance? What's that? You can't say that. Jeez, but you always give him the middle call. What's, what's, well, what, let me get you on this side. So, wait, wait, what are you trying to do? Uh oh. <laughs> let me see that. You give me the middle claw too? Oh! Get that hurt. That was probably a terrible spell job. Okay, there's your bed back. Go back to your nap. Cat nap. Ah, that's okay. She's probably off to bed. Well, I should be going probably in about 20 more minutes. Um, and then Sammy Zane, so that, so that goes on. And then Sammy Zane's the back. She means mouth is start, south hearts there. Sammy Zane just starts throwing, throwing people down. Ray Macero's there. Kurt Angle shows up. Kurt Angle says, we're going to do things the old-fashioned way. We're going to take our differences out in the ring. And then a really aged Alondra Blaze shows up. Pins Kelly Kelly. Who almost flashed everyone. Her front parts. Because of the little skimpy Daisy Dukes that she was wearing. What freaking porno set in Florida was she coming from? I'll tell you what. She played Fred Eagle. And I swear for a second, you saw, you almost, I think you did, I think on replays. I'll see that on YouTube. I swore I saw I, I swore I saw some outer lady there. But every so often that happens. Um how do I explain that? It's not as obvious as inner Libya. But you're still like wait a second. So, Alondra Blaze is a new 24-7 championship. Yep, we solved Kelly Kelly, too. Then we have Rey Mysterio versus Sami Zayn. No, that's right, Rey Mysterio won this. Um, it's kind of a, a quick back and forth. Sami Zayn, after dodging the 619 the first time, says, hey, hey, I'm leaving, I'm done with this. And, let's see here. And the nope, Rob Van Dam, the whole F and show shows up in his singlet. I'm actually surprised that WWE let him back. Because I know. I want to say his interview post Moose Slam Reversary. Or maybe it was even pre. He was. Inhaling something he probably shouldn't have. And the WWE is pretty strict about that. Sergeant Slaughter showed up. Hurricane Helm showed up and Kurt Angle showed up. They kind of shooed Sami Zayn back into the ring. Sami Zayn took his medicine. He took a 619. Uh, the five star frog splash in homage to Rob Van Dam. Who. I don't know. Still looked kind of out out of it. And we'll get to this in more detail soon. But it was an okay match. I mean, it was a ham sandwich. And really the splash Rey Mysterio did in the pose was really weak. As you can tell, he was like bent knees, kind of all crushed up. Saying, 
And then you kind of, it was a weak five star frog splash. Not quite the way Rob Van Dam used to do him. I think it's one of those things, the nostalgia factor just zonks it sometimes. Uh, so then, we have Ric Flair coming out, and I was curious to see the Batista show up. Give me what I want! Give me what I want! And that's funny. And Blaze teases about putting that 24-7 championship in a garbage can, just like she did the women's title when she appeared on WCW Nitro, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Nitro was her Monday night. And when that's, that's when she became Medusa, I think. Yeah. And, of course, then all of a sudden... <laughs> yes, Ted DiBiase shows up. The Million Dollar Man. Money, 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 money. Everybody has a price. Somebody's going to pay. Money, money. But he's like, Alondra Blaze, I don't want to wrestle you. I'll pay you for that 24-7 championship. Goes into his suit jacket. Pulls out... I think they were like all dollar bills. And gave it to her. She gave him the belt. So that's our... Seventh title change. The show. Again, I'm surprised they didn't give it to Hulk Hogan. Oh, wait, did I go through that card? Oh. No, oh, yeah, there we are. Ted DiBiase. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And then when did Alexa this? Oh, yeah, then, um... Alondra Blaze looked weird because one, she aged terribly. Oh, yeah, I think Melina won the belt, too. Yeah, I think Melina won the belt. So that's eight changes. I actually lost track because I didn't know who it was. I just know she did the, the little wiggle thing. And I'm like, oh, wait, I, I've seen that wiggle before. Yeah, that was Melina that did that. Jeez. Oh, oh. Yeah! Yeah. And then she lost it to Alundra Blaze. Alundra Blaze gave, got the money from Ted DiBiase. Alundra Blaze, she had some ugly granny tattoos all over her arm. I have my one, well, I have my one tattoo, folk, and this will be my quick two minute rant. This is getting a little bit long. I have one tattoo on my calf. When I work, I have to look professional. So that means I have to wear long pants. No one knows that I have a tattoo. Um, I am 43 years old. And I'll tell you what, my tattoo still looks really darn good. It still has straight lines. It's faded a little bit in color. And I think, yeah, maybe one day I'll show it to you. But, I mean, the lines are still straight. The curved lines still curve the right way. For the most part, everything's even. And if worse comes to worse and I have to go to professional functions, I can cover it up. No one's, no one's the wiser. Um, hopefully, when I get old, hopefully I'll still have some of my calf muscles. So they won't become all freaky looking, like old man muscles. Alondra Blaze got old in the arms, and those tattoos do not look good on her. That's what I wanted to say. I'm like, what's this? I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Other woman had tattoos on her arm. I forget who she was. Lena was there, Melina's. 
gosh, she has a butt on her. I like that. She has big boobies, too. Uh, Eva Mendez was there, too. I think maybe she was. Oh, she was there, too. Just kind of hanging out. It was a whole weird thing. I mean, they just had, like, random people just there, like, hanging out, having a fun time. Again, uh, the Godfather was there. The Boogeyman was there. I didn't even know Alicia Fox was a legend. Like, what the heck's Alicia Fox doing there? She, 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 she in one shot, had to adjust her, her bottoms there a little bit because she looked like a shiny mirror ball. Alicia Fox is... Not what I consider a legend. Then we have the... Oh, Jerry the King Lawler shows up. Always good to see the king. Always good to be the king. Um, so we have AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins. This is actually a really good, fun match. Um, Rollins, good. I mean, AJ can sell anything. It was a good kind of back and forth, a lot of heavy strikes. Um, eventually, Seth Rollins did go to the top, I think, once too often. And the club, they were their president ringside, said, eh, eh, that's enough of that. So, of course, once they got involved, it, it, was, it was a DQ finish. It was okay. I mean, nothing spectacular. It was actually really, it was a really good setup. And I do like that. The fact that they're keeping AJ, they're not having AJ lose. A DQ is good for both these wrestlers and the fact that AJ doesn't lose, Seth doesn't lose, so they don't look weak. Um, it makes it makes AJ's stroke with the OC, the original club, look strong. It worked. Um, for the moves they did, it was fun. And then, of course, um, because they threatened to get involved, and D-Generation X comes out, mainly of Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Wait a second, Triple H isn't really a legend yet, is he? I don't know. Uh, I mean, they kind of keep the club at bay for a while. But then it's like, no, nah, not now. We're really going to get involved. They just jump in the ring. Brawl and spa, brawl and sues. It's a DQ. It's a death the finish, baby. And this time, nobody win. But it was still good. And it was okay. It was okay. It was a death the finish. It was a death the old ham sandwich, though. Then, of course, um, the club gets sent out to get, they just get tossed out. Uh, eventually, they get chairs. And then the rest of D-Generation X and the click shows up. Uh, who else was there? Road Dog, Jesse James, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, X-Pac. And for some reason, they wanted to include the spirit of China. And Road Dog couldn't do math. But hey, you know what? If if he just said, "Well, I'm just doing Steiner math," that would have solved everything. Steiner math is a universal equation, folks. Uh, then we have Mark Henry in the back talking to Mick Foley. Um, the Drew uh, Drake Maverick then somehow pinned the Million Dollar Man inside of a limo. So it's nice to see that you didn't see the Million Dollar Man lose, because he did have the Million Dollar Dream, which was awesome. Again, I don't know why they... I don't know why they gave it to Lacey Evans and uses it as a wrestle. It's the Katahajane. It's a half Nelson, full arm across, so you're, in, so you're in theory cutting off this, the, the carotid artery. Very slow, because you're, you're only getting one of them. Or it's a jugular vein you're cutting off. You're cutting off the, the blood, su blood supply. It's like a sleeper. You're cutting off the blood flow to the brain. Eh, Lacey Evans uses it as a rest hold, and that just 
makes me not want to watch Lacey Evans wrestle. Um, so Drake Maverick comes out with, with a championship, and for, his wife gets gets goes into the limo. They kind of do like a run around thing. So so she just goes in the limo. She's waiting to get away. Uh, eventually, oh yeah, well, we'll, we'll so we'll get back to them. Of course, the loser locker room empties out. So that's nine changes. Oh. Uh, let's see here. Then in the ring, Mick Foley gives a promo. Then the Fiend shows up. Bray Wyatt shows up, puts the mandible claw on Mick Foley. This is good. I like the way that they're using the Fiend persona. We do need, I think, next week, hopefully a Firefly Funhouse episode. Because, again, the whole time the camera focused on the glove that said hurt. And he put the mandible claw onto Foley. I don't know. I think if you, like, it would be more painful to the other guy because if you just bite him, that would probably make him release the ball. Wrestling! Mandible Claw was one of those things like, the only thing I can think of, stick your fingers far enough down someone else's throat is going to tri trigger a gag reflex. The only nerve I know that would knock you out is a nerve right here in the chin. And I know when that gets traumatized enough, like that's why the uppercut is probably like the most devastating punch. Stat and snap versus the neck back. Between those two stimuli, the, the, the brain just says, nope, time to stop. It's like literally like the off switch of the human body. You hit someone with like a solid uppercut, they just, it's, it's, it's you see it in boxers a thousand times in MMA. It's that one uppercut. It's just nighty night lights out. That's the only thing I could think of. They have, they always said it's stimulating the, the nerve there, but to get to that, it's more of a gag reflex. But going against a lot of medicine on the show, I'm feeling the power for my degrees coming to me. In fact, I'll be using my degrees really soon too. So teaching starts up. That's always a good thing. Uh, then we have a Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross in the moment of bliss. And uh, Betty Lynch, uh, Becky Lynch comes out. They ask her kind of one question gets interrupted by Natalia. And wow, Natalia took must have took some bump that I did not see. Yeah, that or she landed against the ropes. Really funny. And I'll have to watch my videos. I think there was one spot where she did land against the ropes weird. As you can tell, she had bruises on her arm. And, and I've had, when I, when I went wrestling, when I went to the wrestling camp for Killer Kowalski's gym, I had, those, I had the same marks along my ribs, waist, and legs, and it's from hitting the ropes. And it's one of those things your body has to kind of callous up. So that does happen, though. And then Nikki Cross. <laughs> it was Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. I want to say they're almost cute and adorable because they, they drink their coffee literally at the same time. Really funny. And by the way, folks, Nikki Cross does not need any coffee. Um, so I don't know if Natty's arm was bruised up from the, the live matches. And then Natty just, like, needed to throw that table. And then we're backstage. R-Truth, I guess, was hiding in the front part of the limo because Renee Michelle was in the back. Drake Maverick comes in. There's a referee. Our truth gets out of the car, pins Drake Maverick, takes the title, gets back in the limo. Renee Michelle is in the limo. The limo drives off, and Drake Maverick doesn't realize that 
not only did R Truth take off with his belt, <laughs> R Truth also took off with his wife. Whoa. And then Carmella's just standing there, and Carmella's like, What the hell's wrong with you? So again, that was interesting. So, for all these segments, you know what? If I did the 24 7 things separately, I, I, I would be giving out the same thing. You know what? They were all entertaining. Hogan didn't get a title, I guess, which I don't know if Hogan would even want the 24 7 championship. But for all this 24 7 shenanigans, because it's the end of the show, I shall give this a ham sandwich. And then we get near the end of the show. Um, Braun Strowman shows up. There's a guy, Randy Rowe. Listen, I like the fact Braun Strowman goes on the mic. Just wait a moment. This isn't going to take long. Puts the mic down. He just tossed him like a human beanbag. One side of the ring to the other side. I don't even know what the plan was. He just like literally like, picked him off the ground and dropped him. Braun Strowman win, wins in a squash match. Ah, it's a can of soup. And then all the legends come out. And, oh, that's right, I do need these notes. I have to figure out what I get. Uh oh. Wait, is that no? Oh, Slux was um, Window Madness. Well, Six is getting window madness now for sure. That's the only thing I can remember. Um, then, of course, Rick Flair comes out. All of the other people come out. And I want to take a look at that one clip, too. I think Eve Torres and Eve Menendez. There's Eve Torres, Eva Menendez, Melina. Oh, maybe that's, that's who it was. I have to figure out which one. I know. This, I think the same one tried to kiss both Paige and Natalia. And Paige was mildly off-put by it, but not upset. Natalia was like confused. Um, Hulk Hogan's there. Hulk Hogan still gets the cheers. Alicia Fox looked like a, like a mirror ball, and like Parvit was riding up a little bit. I don't really consider Alicia Fox a legend, though. I mean, unless there's... I don't even see Alicia Fox getting into the Hall of Fame. Or the WWE Hall of Fame. She was never that good. She never really had the spotlight. She only held the Divas belt once, I think. Ugh. Oh, cool. Um, Stone Cold came out. That this is the time you what he knows the cadence for what. And yeah, that was it. And it, it was an interesting show. It was a rating pops. Because he had legends kind of inter interdispersed, and Triple H was like, always saying, oh, okay, okay, we have to move this way a little, okay, we have to move this way a little bit more. They got all these people on the stage. And it was okay. It was okay. It probably drew a big ring pop. Because everyone wanted to see their favorite wrestlers. Probably live would have been neat to see all those wrestlers. I know you've seen Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan. There are only two. Big names. And then you have they're, like they're like the top tier people, Flair and Hogan and Stone Cold. Then you get to like the second tier of like Triple H, the whole Degeneration X. Um, yeah, that's probably it. You have the third tier, which is probably. 
like a Londra Blaze. Maybe Kelly Kelly. The Boogeyman. The Godfather. Then you get to like the bottom, like the bottom tier. You have Eve Menendez, um, Eva Torres. And you're like, and, and just like, like, who's that chick? So, overall, that was the show. Not bad. Um, you can always let me know what you think. You can always leave a comment. And like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you, what I said makes sense. Or you can say, that was complete and utter garbage. I wasn't that bad. I was entertained by it. It was just fun to see, especially at the end. Stone Cold came out, gave a long speech, drank beer with everyone. What do you expect? Everyone have a good night. Or morning, or whatever it is. I guess wherever you are for next day. Bye.